Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. In this tutorial, I have a really easy project. Minimal sewing, all you need is a straight stitch and I'm going to show you many different ways that you can decorate a straw hat. So let's get started. All you need is about a quarter of a yard of fabric of 42 inch wide or wider. Your chiffon fabric is normally about 50 inches wide. Then you want to cut a long strip that's anywhere from 6 to 8 inches long. And then you're going to just fold that fabric on the long edge, bringing the front sides of the fabric together. So here is your folded edge right here. You've got raw edges here and at each end. So what you're going to do is leave an opening here in the middle on your longest edge. And then you're going to stitch at both ends. You're going to come down at a diagonal. And then leave your needle down through the fabric, turn your fabric, and you're going to stitch towards the center. And on each side of the opening, make sure you back stitch. Then, this is real important, trim this fabric off to where you have anywhere from an eighth to a fourth, uh, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Then you're going to turn it front side out. And then you're going to fold those edges in at the opening, fold them inside and then stitch along here. Now I'm going to show you how to make a very whimsical hat and I want you to go through your scrap pile. If you don't have a scrap pile then you just need minimal amounts of fabric and I will tell you that as we're going through the process. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to make a really pretty whimsical flower. So to make the flower petals, you can either buy fabric off the bolt that's 42 inch uh, wide quilting fabric if you want to use that, which is what this is. And this was about a quarter, excuse me, an eighth of a yard. Or if you want to make your petals, you can buy fat quarters. So if you bought it off of the bolt like this, I have my selvage edges together. And I'm, then I'm going to fold it in half. And all together you want six three and a half inch squares. That's all you need to get. So now I'm going to show you how to cut it into those squares. Now uh, if you're using a fat quarter just fold your fabric a couple of times so you can cut your squares out really quick. So all I'm going to do here is I'm first going to cut the selvage ends off. So cut it like that. And then I'm going to put my three and a half inch line over here on the end and cut again. And then I'm going to do one more cut because that'll give me eight even though I only really need six. So what I do with my leftover fabric is that I'll just save it for another project. So I like taking two squares to do this next process. So I'm going to bring them front sides together and then I'm going to fold them in half. So you bring the raw edges together. And I'm going to draw this curved line on there. So I'm taking something round and then you're just going to take something to mark your fabric with and just mark it right here. Then I would place a pin to hold this fabric together like that and then you're going to cut these edges off like that. And then when you're done, it looks like this. Then you're going to stitch around three sides only. You don't need to stitch down here. You want to leave that open. And I'm just doing an eighth of an inch wide seam. If you find that you stitched it too wide, all you would need to do is just trim the excess off. So just stitch along these three edges and then you want to just open it up and turn it front side out. Then take a needle and thread and tie a knot at one end and then just do a large basting stitch across here and then gather it up like that and then do a couple of stitches in place to hold it gathered. Then you're going to need another piece of fabric and this piece of fabric will not show when you're done. It's 
really on the back of the petals to hold it all together. And I just used felt. If you don't have felt, just use some other fabric. So I have my felt on the back and then on the front I've pinned the petals down onto the felt. And this petal overlaps this petal, this overlaps this petal, and so forth all the way around. And use pins to hold it in place. And then you're going to stitch it down in a small, maybe one, one and a quarter inch wide circular pattern. This is how you make the center of the flower. And it's best if you choose a different color. It'll make your flower just pop out even more. So take two squares, and these are about four inch squared, and bring them front sides together. Then on one side, take a circle template, and this is about a three inch circle, or take something that's close to this size if you don't have these plastic templates, and then just trace around it. Then I would place a pin in the center to hold the fabric together while you sew it. And then stitch right on your drawn line. When you're done, you're going to just either a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter and just trim it down to about an eighth of an inch wide. So now you're going to pull the two fabric pieces apart like this. And using scissors, you're going to cut a hole in there and then flatten it back out and then insert the scissors in the hole and cut a bigger hole across like that. Then turn it front side out. And if you have polyfill stuffing, you want to take some of it. You don't need a lot and you just want to break it up into small pieces and insert those small pieces inside of this circle and push it out to the ends. Now you don't want to overstuff this. Don't make it too puffy. And if you want, you can take needle and thread and just close this up, but it's not necessary because this part is not going to show. I wound up making two different colors because I couldn't figure out which one I wanted in the center. And so I decided, does it the orange, which I like, but I decided I like the pink better because I really like pink. I like orange too. So now you're going to take a glue gun and you're going to squirt it all over the center of your petals along here. Now take your center and put it on top and then just hold it there for a moment until the glue dries. Now I'm going to show you how to make the band that goes around the top portion of the hat. So you're going to cut it anywhere from six to eight inches wide. It really depends on you and how you want it to look. After you cut out a long strip, now you want to measure the circumference of the top of the hat. Not the brim, but the top, the cap part. You want to measure around there and then add at least an inch and a half. Then you're going to fold over just one edge, about anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half inch, doesn't need to be very much, and press it. Now bring this side in towards the center and then bring this in. It overlaps. It doesn't go all the way to the edge. It comes around the center part. And then just press it flat. Then at each end, you're going to fold it here and fold it again. So you have this little narrow part here. And then you're going to stitch about an inch and a half right along the center here. And again, you do it at both ends. When you're done, your ends should look like this. Now, when you wrap it around the top portion of your hat, you're going to bring it around to where the ends are going to cross over, something like this. You'll first glue one end down first with hot glue, and then take the other one and overlap it and glue it down with hot glue. Now here's mine. I've got the ends, they're laying right on top of the brim here. They're not laying up against this. They're coming down like this, and I have these folded in. You want it like that. 
You want this band to look like it's going into a bow and tied in a knot. And this is what it looks like in the front. Now, the uh, folding of the fabric inside on the sides helps to pull the top portion of the band in to where it will hug this part more. If you don't fold it in like that, it's going to stick out because this cap kind of comes up at an angle. It doesn't go straight up. Your flower is going to go over this so you can see it like that. So this is basically how it's going to go. So you're going to squirt a bunch of glue down here and put something underneath it because the glue will go through this straw hat a little bit and it'll go on to your table surface. So make sure you put maybe some cardboard or something like that. I would also glue a bunch, put a bunch of glue on the back of the flower and then you're just going to stick it there and then hold it in place till the glue dries. Now this is what it looks like from the back and now I'm going to turn it to the side. You can see how it looks from the side and then again here it is from the front. This one was really easy. Now here's two more ways that you can do a hat. Now these straw hats were on clearance at Walmart and I think I got them for under four dollars each so it was really a bargain. Now this one I did with just strictly ribbon. I think it's uh, one and a half or two two inches wide ribbon and I folded the ends of the ribbon down here, this band here, just like I did on the fabric. Folded it in and then just made a simple bow here and it looks nice and even. There's a special way you can make these. And then over here on this one, I used fabric just like I did on the first hat. Folded it over and pressed it, folded the ends down, brought them down in the back, but the bow is made out of wire ribbon. Now I have a separate tutorial. It's three different ways to make a bow. So you have three different choices on how to make a simple bow. Now the ends down here, I want you to look at this one, is that on a lot of your ribbons, especially if it's a polyester, people will take a cigarette lighter and just lightly go along the ends to melt the ends so that they don't uh, fray and come apart. I don't work with fire. I don't do well with fire because I can't hold things very well in my right hand. So I have another effective way to keep those edges from unraveling. This is a product made by Dritz, D-R-I-T-Z, and it's called Fray Check. And what you do is you take this lid off and put the applicator lid on top. On the tip of this cap there's a little groove and in the center of that groove is a little hole where the glue can come out. So you just squeeze this container, slip that little in there over your ribbon and you just squeeze and slide it across and the glue dries clear. I had so much fun making these hats. I wanted to just keep going. There's just so many different things that you can do. And it's a great way to uh, use up some of those scraps that you've got. Because I know a lot of you tell me you have a lot of scraps and you're looking for scrap buster projects. And this will help you in that one. Now, if you want to make a hat for the man in your life, these are called bucket hats. And you can custom make it to any size. Now, I haven't made one yet for Parker, but he want, he's been wanting to play with it. So there he is right there. Now, if you're interested in other sewing projects, I have many. There's a lot of beginner sewing projects down there. So you just scroll down to the description <laughs> section, click on uh, show more or the down arrow and it will expand open and you will see all kinds of links down there, including the bucket hat. That link will be down there. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for uh, watching. I will see you next time and happy sewing. Bye bye. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the 
best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.